Hey guys, so uh, Tub Talk 101 guys, you guys know I love talking about hot tubs. So uh, today we're going to talk about the five most common problems with hot tubs and how to fix them, how to try to fix them uh, yourself. Again, throughout this video, if you don't feel comfortable at any point in time, I would tell you call a professional. A lot of great brick and mortars out there ready to serve you and ready to help you. So first things first, guys, let's talk about what's going on out there. It's pretty crazy what's going on out there, right? Everyone's living rooms are becoming offices. Uh, you know, we have a brand new normal, right? <laughs> you know, our world is suddenly different. So I would tell you this, guys. One thing I would say is support your small businesses. Restaurants are struggling big time right now. A lot of other small businesses are struggling too. I would tell you support your small businesses because guess what? You're going to want them there when this whole entire thing is over. Uh, I still agree with everything, guys. Let's continue to social distance. Guys, it's just so important. Social distance. Try to keep to yourselves through these hard times. And we've got to power through this. Together, it cannot be a one, a two, a 10, 15, 20, or 50 man show, guys. We've got to do it together. So, anyways, let's jump right in to the five most common hot tub problems. Number one, no heat. Guys, it's not a hot tub without the hot part, right? So, hey, let's face it, no heat's number one. So, a couple of things. If you just drain and refilled your hot tub, you could possibly have airlock. The way you take care of an airlock is there's actual unions that connect your motor to your plumbing, right? So you would want to loosen those unions on the motor, right? Again, these are the nuts that are connecting the actual motor to the hot tub. You loosen them up ever so slightly and you listen, you can actually hear the air go, Shh, and then you'll see a bunch of water kind of all coming at once and then just tighten that union back up. If you have a circ pump, okay, circulation pump, like a three quarter inlet and outlet on a circulation pump, then you would move that clamp, right? You would move that clamp and you would just kind of kind of uh, um, uh, pull that vinyl just kind of ever so slightly away. And again, listen for that air when that air starts to go shh and you hear that noise, right? And then you can kind of put the vinyl back on once all the water starts coming, okay? Another trick, clean your filter. A dirty filter will make your hot tub not heat. Uh, thinking like an HVAC system, right? Your HVAC system, it'll freeze up if the filter's dirty, right? Or vice versa, it'll stop heating if that filter's dirty. Same thing here in a hot tub. It's very, very good for the health of the hot tub too to rut routinely clean that filter. Now, when you're cleaning a filter, if you got two parts in a filter, make sure to pull out both parts. Uh, spray it off really, really good with garden hose and get in between the pleats. You gotta get in between the pleats. I see too many people just spraying it off and throwing it back in. No, guys, you got to spread those pleats out, get in there, really clean out that filter. So that's very, very important to the heating system, okay? Another thing is, is flipping the breaker off and on. Guys, uh, most hot tubs today are reset by that actual GFCI breaker on the outside of the house. So flip that breaker down 10, 15 seconds and flip it back up. At that point, you may be restoring um, uh, the, the heating system, okay? All right, number two, jet's not working. Let me explain a jetting system on a good hot tub. Some, some of the cheaper hot tubs in the industry are not set up this way, but how every hot tub should be set up is by diverter valves. That's the best way to plumb a hot tub. A lot of great manufacturers do it. Some of the cheaper ones, not so much. But anyway, you've got these two big diverter valves, okay? These divert water only and not air. And in a minute, you'll see why that's important. So yeah, for whatever section in your hot tub is not working, divert the diverters, okay? They work in tandem, okay? Divert one, one will be one pump, one will be the other pump, right? That's where all the water's going right into. It's going right into that diverter. When you turn that diverter, once you feel water coming out of those jets, okay, that's when you would stop. So now you've got water, right? But now you need to make sure that you got air because it's the mixture of air and water that create pressure or create action from the jet. So once you've got the water coming out, then you want to check your air control valve above that. Those are the smaller valves. Make sure that air control is on, okay? At that point, you can turn the outer collar on that jet. Okay, and that will adjust the airflow just like that air valve. Now, an air valve basically does an entire seat or an entire section, and then individually, those jets' outer collars turn to um, um, restrict the amount of airflow, uh, creating the pressure from the jet. Okay, so number three, number three is error codes, guys. Um, there's all sorts of different error codes. I'll start with the first one. 
SNA and SNB, okay? Sensor one, sensor two. That means you have a thermostat problem, basically. Sensor and thermostat, guys, same thing, basically, all right? So at the end of the day, you wanna grab your own meter. You wanna put your own meter, meter on that horseshoe. If you don't have that horseshoe, you don't have a nice enough ohm meter to be able to measure ohms. And basically the way that an ohm meter works is you're gonna pull that thermostat off of that board, right, okay? All right, power off. Now remember, take power off. And if you're not comfortable doing any of this stuff, don't do it, call a professional. All right, so anyway, you're gonna pull that off and you're gonna put your leads on each one of the wires and you're gonna see what the ohms say, okay? If, if your high limit thermostat, you got two thermostats, you got a high limit thermostat and you've got a temperature, temperature thermostat. If they own very close to the same, you, you, you basically know that there's not a problem with them. And this is why I say that, okay? Uh, follow me here. The hotter the water, the lower the ohms, the colder the water, the higher the ohms, okay? So when you first get your hot tub, those two sensors, they are going to ohm almost identical. So the odds that they're both going bad at the exact same time and they're both going to read the exact same ohms as they get out of balance and everything else, the odds are middle 10 to none, right? And that's why it's always a rule of thumb in the industry if you're ohming out those thermostats, if they are within a half an ohm of each other, your thermostats, 99% of the time, they're going to be good. Uh, it's been very few and far between where I've seen both thermostats going bad at the same time and ohming the same. Um, again, wouldn't worry about that. Um, another problem that you could have is that your board's not recognizing your thermostats. So you'd want to put your meter on DC and you can test that coming off of the actual board to see if you've got some direct current. So see if, you've, uh, if the board's even going to recognize those thermostats. But again, if you're not comfortable doing these things, please call a professional. Okay, another one, flow. If you do not have enough flow going by the actual heating element and your pressure switch isn't open, isn't closing, so forth, you could be reading flow. That means that you do not have enough flow to power on the heater to heat the hot tub, okay? A lot of times that can be a bad uh, flow switch or a bad uh, pressure switch, right? You don't have enough flow. Now, OH, overheat, okay? Overheat basically means that you, um, let's think about it this way, okay? If you do not have a flow, enough flow going by the actual heater and the water around the heating element, okay? So you got a heating element in there, right? And it's just getting hot, 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 hot. And if you don't have water that's passing through that element like that, the water around this heating element, it's gonna hot. It's gonna start getting hot. May even start to boil a little bit. Sometimes people can hear boiling a little bit, right? And then it trips the high limit. That's overheat, right? That means that that water's reached 108, 109, 110 degrees, right? And then it shuts it down to protect itself so that you don't have a, a dry fire, right? And, and then it's going to read OH on the top side uh, display. Now, another one is, is dry fire, which is basically the same thing, right? Again, there's this, it's dry. The heater's dry. There's not enough water passing through the heater. So you're reading dry fire. And uh, that could go back to kind of number one. You could have an airlock and an airlock could cause a dry fire error, co error, error code or an OH or a flow error code, okay? Um, so, and, and there's a long list of other error codes as well. I have a huge list here that I've accumulated over 23 years of being in the industry. So if you have an error code and you're not sure what it is, I don't care. Give me a call, right? You guys know me. I love talking about hot tubs. I'm more than happy to help anybody. 770-558-4496 uh, or visit atlantahottubcenter.com. Uh, uh, All right. So, um, from here, let's talk about the motor making a loud noise. That's going to be number four, okay? So a couple of things. Airlock can make your motor uh, actually make a loud noise, right? So again, if you just drain refilled your hot tub, bleed the air out, that may go ahead and fix that. Another thing that I actually see uh, here and there is something gets sucked into the actual wet end of the actual motor. Like uh, we, pulled, we pulled some goggles out one time, right? And those goggles put a lot of strain on the motor. The motor was making a really, really loud ratcheting, knocking noise. And so ultimately we removed those goggles and the motor actually ran fine. I was actually really surprised it didn't cause damage to the motor. But anyway, doesn't matter. That can uh, make the motor loud. Another thing is just the bearings are going out. So I wanna help you guys with this. If the bearings are going out on your motor and your motor sounds like a freight train, right? At that point in time, go ahead and replace it. We do rebuild motors here, but we kind of stay away from the bearings because then it's just not cost prohibitive. So uh, if you're going to order a motor on the internet, you guys need to be super, super careful. And this is why I say that. For example, U.S. Motors makes 
uh, many different motors for hot tubs, right? Many different electrical motors for hot tubs, but they don't make the pumps. They don't make the wet ends, right? You've got a, a couple dozen different manufacturers of pump wet ends, right? And for example, like Aquaflow and Waterway, your two most common pumps in the actual industry, they're different how they attach to your plumbing. Your discharge is going to be about an inch short of a, of, 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 a, of a waterway discharge. So you're going to go and you're going to put this pump and motor in there and then the plumbing's not going to reach and you're going to be out there replumbing it. So just be careful. Again, that model number on the motor has nothing to do with what pump is going to be on that motor, guys. So anyway, just some good advice there. Again, if you're not comfortable with any of this stuff, please call a professional. All right, last one, GFCI tripping. Guys, if your GFCI, ground fault interrupt protection, if your breaker is tripping outside, you have a short to ground. The uh, best way to figure out a short to ground is the process of elimination. Now, we're dealing mostly with 220 volts of electricity in the industry today, so you want to be super, super careful. If you're not comfortable, please call a professional. But you would start unplugging different components off of the circuit board until you could get that GFCI breaker to stay in the up position okay now it is possible you got a bad gfci breaker okay um there is a way to test that uh being that we have an electrician on staff uh that is stuff that we do deal with sometimes you got a bad uh whip from the uh, panel to the hot tub right uh, that's much harder to diagnose um on a breaker again i'm not suggesting that you do this but the testing of it would be you turn off the inside breaker take the load off of the outside breaker take the wires that go to the tub out of the outside out of that bottom of that breaker right on your outside sub panel turn the inside breaker back on right and if you flip up that breaker with no load right that means the hot tub isn't pulling any power from that breaker right it means that breaker is not getting used for anything Thing basically right at that point you've got the power off of the bottom of the breaker and you go to power that 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 breaker on and it trips without a load on it you got a bad breaker okay anyway this is brian atlanta hot tub center and your five most common hot tub issues and a lot on how to uh, fix them yourself so if you're a little bit handy again if you're not comfortable please call a professional guys i know it's crazy out there today stay safe thanks for watching